Anyone object to being filmed or recorded? No. Okay, right. Um, anyone got any interest? <coughs> no? Um, Burns to last week? Any followers of Burns to last week? Because we have a couple of AOBs on the agenda, so what I'm going to leave it to the committee, I'm going to swap a couple of things around, okay? So the first thing we'll do, the supplementary agenda um, for the next fees and charges. We'll do that first. Then this taxi that's outside, because the taxi wasn't there on Friday, before it goes dark, We'll ask members to come and have a look at it. We'll come back, we won't discuss that because we may want to ask a lot of questions. And um, we'll go on to um, the three and four of the agenda and we'll tag the taxi outside at the end of the day. Okay. And the other thing is, the taxi driver, taxi driver may not want his information to be filmed or recorded. Okay, so that's how we're going to do things. Is that agree? Yes. Okay, so let Tori up first. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Chair. Uh, just by way of background in relation to this particular report, um, it's considered good practice that the Council agrees the local election fees, and this report essentially brings those to your attention. It renders for May's elections. Uh, the role of the returning officer is a statutory role that the Council is obliged to report to officer. We're acting the role of the turning officer, which is a distinct role in its own right, and it does attract a number of um, elements which are not which are unique to its role, more than being that it's a personal liability or personal responsibilities associated with that particular role. And it's important that there is a distinction between um, employees of the council and the role of the turning officer, given the nature of the responsibilities around the elections. Uh, and the returning officer is entitled to. Um, sufficient resources in order to ensure the effective running of an election. And obviously all members have vested interest in ensuring that happens as indeed residents uh, within the borough. The arrangements are such that um, clearly there are requirements for sufficient staff to be uh, resourced and obtained in order for elections to be uh, effectively run. And this report sets out the structure of some of the roles or the roles that the returning officer will look to a point in order to ensure the elections run as required. Now this is a combined election that we have in May um, and this report deals with the fees associated with the local election. Uh, the uh, parliamentary elections are dealt with and covered through arrangements with the cabinet office um, and the returning officer will address and deal with issues around the, the cost of the parliamentary election directly with the cabinet office in the usual way. So before you have effectively two appendices, the first appendices uh, effectively provide some benchmarking information with some of our local uh, neighbouring Merseyside authorities. One of the things you do need to bear in mind is each local authority and each returning officer effectively will staff their elections in the way they believe they need to, to cater for the local differences and variations that you will have. Um, and so you'll always have differences in staff um, roles and so on, and that's the reason why you do have differences in, in the Table 1 schedule. What you do have in front of you is essentially the formula that often we, we, we will apply, uh, which is based upon an agreed formula whereby uh, the rates and the fees are increased by RPI. Uh, and that's on the end column there in grey indicates the fees that will be applied in relation to May's elections. Over the page you have then table two, which essentially provides again further details on a uh, Roll by roll basis with regards to the fees themselves, and that sets out the precise cost uh, that will be associated with each role, and that will be a liability that clearly will have to be met as part of the uh, fees themselves. So, before you today is uh, the, the, the proposed fees that the returning officer is looking for endorsement from the committee. As I said, it's part of the practice approach that members are aware of the fees that should be applied by the returning officer who will effectively apply those fees with your consent. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Both committees and daughters, it's been quite a few years since the start of this committee, so I'm just wondering with those recommendations, please, um, is that, does that go to 
all the return end up to the return end officer, and then it is he decides how they allocate the fees to polling clerks and how many polling clerks they have, how many counting dogs they have, etc. So the question is, is this if we recommend three or three days recommendations, does that determine the return end officer has to follow the path of those many clerks, or is it up to their discretion? Chair, do you want to take what's just been? There'll be, this just shows the uh, fees per, per role, and we will obviously have a number of counting clerks, for example, and, and so on. Uh, and we will uh, staff up to the appropriate levels to ensure that there are sufficient staff to be able to run the, the election the account as, as we require them. Um, so, in answer to your question, yes, there will be more staff, um, but this is the, the fee that will be applied per role. Okay, but does the return go to get a fixed amount? Is that what you're asking us to recommend here? At, at scale, at, the, at table two, scale fees at A, that will be the returning officer fee, and um, that I'm asking the committee to endorse the return, <coughs> returning officer's fee for the local election. Sorry, Chair, just because it is important, because what I want to ascertain is all those figures for the public clerks and the talents and things, is that give it to the returning officer and entrust it to him to distribute that money and how he sees fit. And another question is, if this return is very big, the money spent on that, does the money then come back to the local authority or does the return have to get them to keep that money? No, the, we will pay in accordance with this schedule. Um, and we, if, there's, if there's any budget remaining that the council has allocated for elections or the local elections, then that was returned and that is a budget that will return back to the council. The returning officer does not receive or retain any surplus that may exist in the last of the election budget for the local elections. The fee that the returning officer will get will be in accordance with the fee that's the calculation there, which is 5,528. That will be the fee to the returning officer. Um, and, and the individuals for the local elections will get um, the rate as set out in the schedule. And as I say, if there is any surplus budget that is retained back by the just a very quick one, are these fees based on a cost of living increase purely in terms of the same number of people generally being involved, but just an update to take account of cost of living? Is that the principle behind the fees and so forth, or is there any variation to that? It's, it, well, it's, it's probably um, a historic calculation based upon the RPI increase, and that's what we've, we've applied, and we've applied that uh, for a number of years. Um, just to reflect that there may be changing circumstances and, and it's the, the RPI that as of the 1st of January that is the formula that we've applied over the years um, to ensure that the fees are sufficiently competitive with <coughs> labour and local authorities. Um, one of the things that we try and do with our labour and local authorities is ensure that, that we benchmark against them while that acts as a good check and balance to ensure that our fees are competitive and appropriate and set at the right level and also ensures that we don't compete with one another where we need to have effective staff. Um, and we all of us have to have uh, competent and effective staff mm -hmm. at our um, respective accounts. So it ensures that we do have um, appropriate staff available <coughs> to us all um, at this critical time. Yeah, we've got a local election mm -hmm. and a national election this time. And do the figures that you quoted on the first sheet, for instance, following state of inspectors time 22, without having the time 103, etc. Do those figures reflect what you believe you will need this time, and are they fixed, or is it something going to go up if something goes wrong? No, we, we we base our calculations on our experiences of the past, and we factor in uh, sufficient uh, resilience to ensure that we have sufficient staff. So the figures you have here is our judgment based upon previous years, and also ensuring that we do have enough staff, not excessively, but enough to ensure that. Uh, we're able to meet the perceived demand uh, and anticipate as much as we can um, the fact that in recent years, if nothing else, there's been a lot more interest in elections. We recognise that um, and we're expecting this election to be no different. If anything else, it may attract a lot more uh, interest and accordingly we are factoring that in as part of our uh, setting up so that on the night we're sufficiently resourced to ensure that uh, as, best, as best we can the, the is, is effective and efficient. Uh, and one of the things we don't run into difficulties is, is insufficient resources because it has a number of implications for us on the line. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you.
Um, thank you, Chair. Um, what I wasn't clear about is on table one, the presiding officer, the polling station inspector, the previous years are all quoted as a figure including training of £25, and then this year it's a slight increase on the figure you take off £25. Why is £25 mentioned when not mentioned? Previously, the, the, that figure was included in the training fee of £25, but now in line with the rest of the NSSI, the training fee has become £50. So I'm not sure if you understood that. Uh, what we've done with the adjustment this year is that we've allocated £50 for the training uh, for presiding officers as a separate fee, which brings us in line with our major authorities, <coughs> so that there's an adjustment there which um, Reflects, reflects that position. Um, and the reason why we've done that is because of the combined election of this, we recognise there's additional responsibilities on the presiding officer um, at the general election. Uh, as I say, we anticipate greater um, electoral participation as well, and to ensure that we reflect that level of responsibility and the accountability, we uh, reflect that with the fees and we've taken out that the training and, and put that separately which brings us in line with our website and local Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. Thank you. Who will be the actual returning officer for this one? We're going to need you to do this episode or this episode. I'm returning officer to uh, Eric Robertson arriving and what he does, then he takes over the role as council has. So I'm only um, caretaking returning officer um, in that sense, but Eric Robertson will be the Acting Lieutenant Officer for both uh, for the election and for some of the men. In that case, Chair, can I move that the returning officers be being incorporated into the Chief of Deputy Salary? Salary, and that recommendation does not stand in the thing at the time of the current Commission of the Chief Executive, £165,000 would be enough to run this authority and act as the returning officer. Just take a to the members and to the returning officer. Under this, the returning officer um, receives a returning officer fee of five thousand five hundred and five pounds for the local elections. Twenty-eight pounds. Um, Any other members? Any other comments? If you might, yeah. Um, on my own mind, um, five thousand. Who stipulates the set amount? Is that done by government or is it been set here for over the years? It, it's, it's set here um, and not, not government. Government deal with the parliamentary election. Um, the, the reason for the returning loss of principally is because of the personal responsibilities associated with the rock. Um, that is one of the reasons why the, the, the fee is introduced. Um, to reflect that additional responsibility, which is of a personal kind, which is distinct from other uh, responsibilities um, that an individual would have uh, when they are wearing and occupying that position. Um, there is also those implications that arise and she looks to essentially reflect some of that responsibility or kind of thing. Yeah.
those years, but I, I'll tell you now, I do not want to stop this from committing. I do not want this committee to be embroiled in a political thing for the time. I don't, because it's not, I never, ever has been. No, okay. So it's, I think we need to clarify it. Yes, I'm going to clarify it again. Yes, Chair, and it's perfectly reasonable for the committee to be involved in considering these quick council funds are being expended for the purposes of the local elections. Um, I guess it, I think it would be remiss of me not to mention the fact that uh, because there's a combined there's a parliamentary election that the returning officer is also entitled to a fee which Captain Dockett says uh, to for the returning officer in respect of the parliamentary election. I, I don't know what that sum will be, that's yet to be confirmed, I don't believe they have confirmed that fee yet, but there is a fee also um, the returning officer will get um, as part of running and effectively overseeing the uh, parliamentary elections. Um, and, and that may be a fact that you, you may need to bear in mind in relation to, to this. Um, but that, that's, I, I thought it would be remiss of me not to mention that to you in your conversation. Excuse me, Chair. It seems to be a normal process. May I suggest that, you know, clearly everyone's got a new right to raise it. And, um, has this committee got the power contrary rule that agreed to that right now? Well, I have another cut to make the question. What's that? Sorry. That's what I'm asking. So the returning officer needs to have the framework and needs to uh, be clear about the framework that the returning officer applies in order to ensure that the elections operate effectively and otherwise we clearly will grant or court if we don't. The purpose of this exercise is to be open and transparent around the fees around the local elections uh, so that we're clear as to how those fees are, uh, are applied. Um, in so far as the returning officer fee itself, uh, I've been focusing on the returning officer's fee rather than other fees, if, uh, please correct me. Well, clearly, the committee would not be in a position to prevent the returning officer undertaking the statutory role that the returning officer has because the personal responsibility and liability that's associated with the role. So, whatever you decide will need to be consistent and enabling the returning officer to discharge the functions and responsibilities conferred by that purpose of the role. Um, and so, there's a balancing act here between the committee expressing its thoughts and views with the returning officer and myself, and the returning officer at this point in time will take on board. Um, it's, as I say, considered good practice that you have regards to um, and can comment on the fees so that they can be agreed uh, for obvious reasons. But you need to also bear in mind that you need to enable the returning officer to discharge the statutory duty and responsibilities that the post confers. Um, yes, the fee, it's obviously not right for a returning officer to be responsible and determine their own fee. And that's why clearly the, 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 the fee rates are brought here. Um, Parliamentary, as I say, are set by a cabinet office and therefore outside the jurisdiction of this council. Um, and, and it is a matter for, for yourself, um, to some extent, to, to, to indicate what your thoughts are around the fee uh, for the returning officer in these circumstances, bearing in mind the obligations that are, are clearly apparent and need to be discharged by the returning officer. Um, and I'll take the points around the current salary, but this you have to bear in mind is designed to be and is a distinct and separate role to any other role that an individual may occupy for the council. Um, and, and that is deliberate uh, because the elections need to be operated separately independently of the political environment within of the council, within the machinery of the council. So that's the reason for why it is distinct and separate and why personal liability and responsibility does and is attracted to the role. And as I say, the fee is designed to recognise that uh, as part of this whole arrangement. Uh, and, and obviously, I'm glad you've yourselves in terms of your thoughts in that regard, but I'm asking you to bear those factors. It's quite clear to say to thank you. Well, that's right. I'm going to have a question. Thank you,
factors arising because of the nature of this particular role. Um, and whilst I'm not looking to defend the fee or any shape or form, I think there is some obvious and, and uh, important differentials here with regards to the RO independence and the role of the RO being seen as a distinct role to any other position that a, an officer of the council occupies. Uh, and to conflate, um, in this case, the chief executive role and the returning officer role um, in relation to fees and salaries, I think um, I would I would warn against some caution there. Um, because to me it's important that the council does in its own mind recognise the separation of responsibilities and duties. Um, and that should be borne in mind when you determine this particular issue. David, I want to talk about Yeah. 
what on earth I'm looking at or what I'm approving or not approving, I wouldn't have the faintest clue. <laughs> To explain oh, that, yeah. to explain, um, you would be approving it as a member, obviously, of this committee in terms of the comfort that uh, an individual would have from that. The safety side would be decided through the compliance test. So the, the compliance test would tell you whether or not it was safe and in any safe condition. So what we're looking at. It's, it's the it's the cosmetic. It's whether you'll be satisfied for um, yourself or other members <coughs> of willing to go and travel in this vehicle. Um, is it in a satisfactory condition in terms of um, obviously the seating, the paintwork, mm -hmm. things that you can visibly see um, with the vehicle, um, or is it not? Okay. So with all due respect, Chair, um, I've, I've, I've inspected quite a few vehicles on the flight time here, I'm sure. Um, my concern at this time is not been tested. Well, let's, can I just adjourn the meeting, ten minutes ten, we'll all go now and look at it, and then that will be on the end of the agenda. Where is it? Oh, that's <laughs>